Hello and welcome to this session on model automation, planning and financial reporting with um, Power BI. My name is Martin Kratke. I'm one of the founders of uh, Managerity and Terrace, and I will be guiding you uh, through this session. Our agenda today is um, initially just a bit of a quick introduction of um, what uh, my background is and what we do as an organization. And then we go straight into the topic uh, of having a look at the data model, um, recommended best practices and, and ways to do this as efficient as possible, particularly around the uh, finance context. Um, our next topic then is the, the integration of data. What are effective ways to integrate ERP, accounting, software as a service uh, data? And we'll show you uh, a few options there. And then we look at the synchronization of Power BI with a data warehouse. So you have your data in Power BI, but you want to structure it and um, synchronize it back to your data warehouse. Then the next topic will be um, to how can you realize planning um, in Power BI and with a Power BI context. Um, we show you a few ways, um, one of them how you can write back enable any Power BI model. And then we go into more specialized uh, planning topics like integrated planning that are typically relevant um, in the finance context, so the combination of income statements, uh, balance sheet and um, cash flow. And then finally, we look at ways to realize um, financial reports in a very easy fashion so that they look exactly like a financial statement should and it's also easy to realize. I mean, there's many ways out there how you can do this in Power BI, but most of them require quite advanced um, know-how and we'll show you ways how you can do this very quickly and very easily. And then finally, also um, a similar uh, approach with um, project reporting and even project planning so that you can add new tasks uh, to a plan, you can edit uh, your tasks, you can group them and so on. So just a little bit about my background. I've been in this space for the last uh, 20 years in the um, financial analytics planning space. I've worked with most of the major technologies uh, on the way. And now for the last five years, very intensively with, with Power BI, um, I've developed some of the um, initial Power BI uh, demo models. And we have now, as, a, as an organization, nine uh, Power BI showcases where we cover a variety of topics from uh, public sector uh, analytics to wine reviews, one of my favorite uh, topics. And um, I would love to connect with you. So just uh, look up my profile uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, here are my details. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, the Carries FPA, um, I would love to be in conversation with you. Um, I'm one of the founders um, of the Managerity Actaris group. So we specialize entirely on the Microsoft uh, Power Platform and Data Platform, particular Power BI. Um, and provide services in this space with our consulting arm, Managility. And then we also have a, a product company that um, focuses on add-on solutions with Power BI, Azure, Excel, and the, and the Power Platform. Um, with um, Managility, um, as I mentioned before, we've worked with, this, uh, with the product from the start. We have one of the globally featured partners, nine showcase projects, Microsoft Gold Partner. And we have implemented uh, Power BI solutions now, a few hundred uh, across the world in you know, every industry you can imagine. And then also developed um, our product, uh, Actaris based on this, which is a framework that covers from end to end uh, the, the process of um, an analytics and planning. So initially ways to uh, automate and make the data integration much easier, um, either with really completely automated solution end to end for particular um, source systems, uh, like you see covered here, Zero QuickBooks Dynamics, where we really give you an end to end package 
from uh, data warehouse that's automatically generated from these source systems to uh, the front end reports and uh, data entry forms. So it's just really a few clicks. You can add your, your source system and, and on the other end you get the uh, nearly you get the optimal Power BI uh, reports, but also an in, a two-way integration into Excel, and it's always two ways. So we have um, a very powerful planning engine that works in conjunction with the data platform, typically SQL Server. Uh, with our product, typically comes a SQL Server subscription, so it's a very cost-effective way to have a proper data warehouse in place based on um, Azure SQL Server but you can also use your own Azure tenant and you can even use your own on-premise SQL Server. And in conjunction with this, our planning engine provides uh, likely one of the most advanced um, options to do planning for hundreds of users and um, millions of records uh, per second from a processing perspective. So we typically handle complex write-back scenarios where you do simulations on very aggregated levels. These are automatically broken down to the detail uh, you take into account allocations, complex financial logic, and so this is what our engine handles. And we typically replace very expensive, specialized um, corporate performance management solutions that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, our customers can do the same thing very cost effectively and most importantly with their existing knowledge in place so that they're not um, at ransom by some specialized consultants where there's only a few uh, available, but they can implement their, um, their projects. A lot of our clients do it themselves without being reliant on, on someone else because in the end, the key knowledge that you need is um, SQL Server, uh, Power BI, Azure. So as long as you have someone that's familiar in this space and you can perfectly implement projects with us. So this just a little bit um, around the product platform. What we are addressing typically is, as I mentioned already, the complex integrations, particularly with systems that are not as straightforward uh, to integrate in Power BI that require complex um, APIs, which many of the accounting systems do. And then even if you get the API uh, connection going, uh, the next steps are typically pretty complex because you're dealing with hundreds of tables and you need to do complex transformations and implement the financial logic. We take care of all this by giving you for the particular systems that we support, best practice solution to take away all this headache for you. And But then also options to generically make the data integration easier, uh, where on the one hand, we directly can uh, allow you to synchronize your Power BI models with the data warehouse, but also um, plan enable your, um, your Power BI model. Which means that you can do your, your planning, your write back, your editing of the model directly in Power BI. Um, and don't have to leave the application. But equally, if you, as many of you are still likely happy with Excel. For the Excel users among you, we also offer the option to do this in Excel. So we have an, uh, an Excel add-in that allows you to do all these planning, uh, performance management requirements directly in Excel. So the modeling, the write-back, the editing, the mapping of accounts, all these things uh, happens can also happen directly in Excel. Um, the, the next part is the modeling. So as I mentioned before, already proven models. So this is the automated way of doing things, but then also allowing the end users to build their models in a persistent way where you store the, the data in the model directly um, using, using our tools. So we've got uh, a software as a service based, a cloud based um, modeler tool that on the one hand manages the integration of the data sources and creates the data warehouse, but also allows you to do the modeling in a very easy way. So you don't need to be a SQL Server expert. You can just sign up um, for our service, which only takes a minute, that automatically provisions the SQL environment. And you can then, uh, on the one hand, automatically manage uh, the models so from the source systems that we support, or where you get the end-to-end -end ready solution, or you can uh, build the models yourselves with the approaches uh, that we offer that are uh, way easier than to do this the old-fashioned ETL way. 
Um, the next one, as we discussed, is the planning. So uh, very advanced planning options, three-way financial logic, scenario management, typical workflows that are required in, in planning. So for example, submission of plans, being able to track who has submitted uh, reminders, uh, hierarchy workflows where you need approvals, but then also transparency. When, once you allow write back, you really need to make sure that you are in control so that it is transparent who has done what. And in our case, we record every single transaction that happens in the system. So you have a complete audit trail who has changed what, who has entered what data and can then also potentially uh, easily um, fix it again. And then finally, um, a strong focus on financial reporting, so to allow you to do reports exactly as required in a financial context, uh, but in a very easy way. So there are a variety of ways in Power BI how you can do this, but they typically require quite advanced um, know-how, particularly around tax, which is not necessarily the forte of uh, a typical finance person. So we help you there to do this the easiest way possible with the same flexibility that you typically have in Excel. And the best thing is to see this live and we'll show you a little bit later on. So with our product, um, we have received um, a fair bit of recognition. Um, we have three editor's choices of our Power BI visuals by Microsoft. We have very good uh, review scores on independent websites. We were voted the top four solution by the, the top four uh, FP&A, Financial Planning and Analytics Solution. By the U.S. Association of Finance Professionals, so they look at all um, tools in the market. Some of the multi-billion-dollar market cap specialized players, as I mentioned already, very expensive ones. And our solution was deemed to be uh, at least equal to what is offered there, uh, typically at a way higher price than uh, doing it with us. Um, we've got recognition by industry analysts uh, and also featured in the mainstream press. Most importantly, though, is recognition by our customers. We've got now 700 plus customers, any size, uh, any industry across the world um, that um, are liking our solution and, and, and really getting benefit from it. And in our case, it's completely scalable. So you can start very small for a few $10 and you can roll it out at billion dollar groups um, with hundreds of users exactly as you, as you require. So um, the first uh, topic now that I would like to look at is the data model, um, which is obviously the key part um, of uh, an FP&A, CPM, but nearly any Power BI requirement. So if your data model is right, then everything else is typically okay. But the other way around is unfortunately also true. If your data model is not right, then uh, you will have uh, a lot of uh, problems down the line and things that are if it's the right data model easy can get very complicated uh, and hard if you're not uh, if you don't have your data model set up correctly and the typically recommended uh, way there is uh, the star scheme approach so you have your fact tables that contain uh, the the actual transactions and then you have the dimensions or lookup tables um, that contain uh, your, your master data, so for example, the uh, typically always use the accounts, but also organizational details, uh, cost centers, uh, time hierarchies, scenarios. So this is, this is a typical setup, but let, let's have a look at this, um, how this works uh, directly in a Power BI context. So here we can see in our typical Power BI model, this is actually uh, model that we automatically generate from one of the accounting systems. In this case, it's Zero, a very popular accounting system here in the Asia Pacific region. And you can see this can get pretty complicated. So if you have to do this yourself from scratch, it'll probably take you a while. And um, with Zero, it's nearly close to in impossible because uh, the API, if, if you have just one organization, it might work. But as soon as you start to have multiple companies, which we typically deal with. So consolidations of multiple companies will get very, very hard. And even if you get it together to then um, transform the table into a format that's useful for analytics purpose, it will be a very complex process. 
So uh, with us, you get all this out of the box. You just um, you know sign up and add your, in this case, zero company, but it could also be a variety of others from QuickBooks, um, Dynamics, uh, marketing systems like HubSpot. And so we give you all this out of the box and with the automated updates to the source systems as well. But what's important here is the the setup. So you can see we have the, the journal transactions here. So they're typically the... Um, financial transactions, like anything that um, happens in an accounting system is typically uh, always reflected in a general ledger table, in addition to a variety of other ones that you can see here from payments to bank transactions and so on, but general ledger is typically um, always used. And then you have your dimension tables around this. So with zero, we have accounts, we have organization details, we have tracking categories. And, and as you can see, they are connected to the main transaction table via um, dimension table. And that's typically the way this um, is done in the best way. And then on, on the front end side, um, things get uh, pretty straightforward. So if you, if you want to set up your uh, reports, and this is again something that um, our customers get out of the box. So they get these reports with you know all these uh, report pages of actual budget comparison, group company performance, um, sales uh, and, and analytics to get all this out of the box, including um, all the features in Power BI are already uh, properly set up. So for example, if I go here to a different year where we have some more data. So take this additional financial. So here we see now we have some more data, but if I click on a bar, and I want to do the analysis on explaining the increase. This is all properly set up. And I can see now what has driven this increase. And in here we see we have performed pretty well in this um, organization. And this one has uh, driven the results down. So that then the final result is this year with this comparison. So all these AI features in Power BI are already uh, also um, configured that they work um, immediately. So here we see now a typical um, financial report, again, that's automatically created. And uh, you can see also now what I mentioned before, uh, the output of one of our visuals. So this is the financial reporting visual, here is financial reporting, that allows you to set up the um, financial reports in a very easy fashion. But I will get to this in detail a little bit later. So the way you get to these end-to-end um, -end, uh, models, so the, uh, the cloud-based data warehouse, the Power BI model and the Power BI reports and uh, planning forms is by using um, the Ictaris modeler. The Ictaris modeler is a software as a service-based solution which only takes a minute to sign up. So you sign up on our website, ictaris.com. You have a free trial as well. And you can then add your source systems for the complete end-to-end -end solution. So that's really the ready-made solution uh, with everything. Or if you're not using uh, one of these systems, you can use the generic approach. With uh, the end-to-end -end solution, you just pick the system that you need. For example, zero. You click on add. You connect to uh, the companies that you want to use. So you can connect as many entities and companies of these systems that you want. You can even combine multiple ones, so three from zero and two from QuickBooks. And this will then automatically generate the data warehouse. So what you saw before, the, the fact tables and the dimension tables, but not just this. So it will also be uh, you know, all the tax calculations and the reports that you saw before. But you then have also the option to, to change everything. So you see here now, these are the, the models that were generated. So from the accounting systems, we're combining here a few. As you can see here with this prefix, we have a few from QuickBooks, we have a few from MYOB, Zero, and so on. So you see the tables as they come from the source system. So here we have all the accounts and, and, and hierarchies there. But you then have the option to, to also maintain this. So I can uh, click here on Edit. And you can edit these things. You can add new hierarchy levels. You can change uh, details here. You can change the order. You can add the order, which is typically report important for financial reporting. That you change the order of how you want to present things. And all this is available here. Again, any user you see, this is uh, very straightforward to use, can then modify the model 
um, as they need to. And this is then obviously automatically reflected uh, on the front end side because what this maintains are the data warehouse tables that you can maintain here in this easy to use model. The next example that I quickly want to cover is um, how can you work with solutions where it is not that easy to have a full end-to-end -end solution because with more complex ERP systems uh, they really vary they, it depends on the you know what modules you have uh, licensed and what your requirements are so it's nearly impossible to have a completely standardized solution so in the in this example I want to show you how you work with solutions that are a little bit more complex and I'm using here Dynamics 365. So this is now an example of Dynamics 365 tables. So you see here, I've connected a few tables from Dynamics 365, but this is these are a few from hundreds of tables that you could use. So you can connect uh, these tables uh, in in Power BI. So there are um, connectors there. So just to quickly show you this, if we search, for example, for complex systems like SAP or Dynamics, so this would be the approach now that I'm showing you. So we can connect, for example, here to Dynamics 365. That's what I did. I added these tables. And here you can see the typical ones that I've already mentioned before. So we again have the, the star schema um, data model structure. We have general ledger activities. We have, uh, in this case, ledgers, we have legal entities, accounts, and so on. And it's a little bit more complicated uh, this to set up. You really need to understand the data model. So I've linked these tables here. And so, um, you know, it's nice to have the reports. You can see a few of our visuals here, the financial reporting one that, you, that, are, that you've already seen before, but then also the variance one that is focused on showing you variances so target, actual target variances in a small multiples way so that I can see how have the different companies in my group performed. I can immediately see if it's positive or negative. I can drill down and here I can even edit this, but we'll go in, we'll go there a little bit later. So you can even do your planning there as well. But, but we look at that when we look at the planning. But the thing is now these connections here are typically very slow. So these are API um, connections that are very slow. So if you have to refresh things, this will take a long time. And often um, our customers also want to have this data in the Power BI model, not just in, uh, in one Power BI desktop uh, model, but they want to have it back in the data warehouse, typically a relational data warehouse. And for this purpose, um, we have now our new Power BI Sync um, tool that allows you to turn any Power BI model on the one hand into a relational data warehouse, but to also, but also gives you the opportunity to plan and enable it. So immediately allowing you to do write back. So in, you initially you could just configure um, your source and your target. So we support also um, Power BI data sets. So it's Power BI uh, data sets that are published online or Power BI data flows. And then, so this is the source side. In addition to the, you can also use the Power BI desktop. So we have a Power BI desktop file with the data that works as well. This would, you wouldn't need the source or data set connection details here. Um, and then the target. So what's your target SQL database where you want to deploy this? And so this you initially set up and then you can either connect to the Power BI service or to the Power BI desktop. And the way this works is you just um, look at what are the files that are available. So here I've got my dynamics file, the ones that you can just see here. So, and here I see now all the table from this Power BI file, for example, the main accounts. And I can also see now the structure here. And now with just one click, I can export them to SQL Server and also create uh, an Actaris table. And Actaris means um, it is equally a SQL Server table, but it's write enabled. And um, I can also automate this process so I can say, um, take all these tables and automatically refresh them. So if you have um, you know, a Power BI model where you want to refresh structures and data, you can just um, schedule this um, for all the tables that you want, and then it will automatically update the data to the SQL Data Warehouse. So you synchronize your SQL Data Warehouse with your Power BI model, and you write enable it. Because what has happened now, it has created now these SQL Server tables, in my case, I had them already. So when you do this the first time, you just uh, add these SQL Server tables. 
And then uh, you see with these new tables, I have now um, a new right back model. You can see here we've got the right back model. And the only thing you do is you take the amount, the other ones are the dimensions of your right back model, so you can exactly specify the details, so like what we had before, the uh, scenario, uh, the uh, accounts, um, and whatever other details you have. So here we have the main accounts, the legal entities, and we have the date dimension as well. Again, all this can be set up as you want it. And then you can also edit it. So you have with the modeler that you've seen before, the option now you, you can go to the particular uh, table. This is the SQL server table. You have now the option here to see um, all this. And you can edit this. What, as a financial person, you often want to. You want to change names. You want to change orders. You want to um, change account names. You want to create new groupings. And all this, and not just for the accounts, but for everything else. So if you want to have a new date, detail you can just maintain this here once and it you have the benefit of a central data warehouse model so wherever this is used and this could be also excel this could be anything even a tableau uh, file if you want to because with tableau you can also connect the sql server you have this one version of the truth available here that brings all your data sources together either completely automated with the various apps or as you need it with um, a carries instant link and then you have the, f the options to fully edit this as required. So we have here then the option to, we've just added the, the, the plan, which is just the, then this amount field from the right back table. We've added this here. Equally, I can add it, can add it here. So for my uh, budget, I'm just pointing here to this amount. I've renamed it here so that it shows nicely as, as a budget. And I can immediately edit it from here. So if I go here now into edit mode and say, um, I want to start a new plan, um, I could just now double click here. And so you can see I can change my estimates just by dragging and dropping here and save this and write this back um, as my new plan. And this is potentially a pretty complex operation, but you see how quick it was. So I wrote here on a, on a total sales level, the new, um, the new budget. But this has distributed to all the underlying accounts. So we see now here the updated data. And if I do the drill down here, I will see that this was not actually a detail level, but this has a lot of detail revenue accounts underneath. So I've changed all these with this one uh, data entry here. So this is just the, the plan enablement, and this is how it works for any any Power BI model, model. So whatever you have in Power BI model, using this approach to just um, uh, use the, the, the Power Sync tool, point to the tables that you want to write enable, and then just, just one click, um, add them to the Acaris instance that you automatically get with Acaris, or to your own SQL server, uh, either the normal table or as a write enable table as you saw before here. So this is just a quick example of how you can write enable Power BI models. Um, the next thing that I would like to cover are a little bit more complex write back processes. So here we see now a little bit more uh, sophisticated example for planning. So in this sample, we have uh, a wide variety of planning options uh, from an initial dashboard, you know, where you can see key KPIs, where you have the option to add unstru unstructured comments, where you can review the workflow status of your planning process. You've got the small multiples visualization, uh, and then a lot of options to, to do your planning. So you saw before how you can plan enable the model and there's not dif there's different options. You saw the one with the power sync, but you can equally use the, uh, the Terrace apps that automatically give you this out of the box, or you can use another approach that we call instant link. Um, this allows you to, in a similar fashion, to Power BI sync link to another table and then uh, provide automatically the planning and editing features. Um, you know, for example, for analysis services, uh, salesforce.com, um, a variety, wide variety of, of, of sources. And so once you have set up the planning model, you have now the option here, this is what I will be showing a little bit, um, uh, how you can use the Actaris Visual. So behind this, um, we are using the Actaris Visuals to, 
to provide you with all these different planning functionalities. And the first and most common one is um, typically a matrix-based form of planning. So here I have my matrix with, in this case, um, uh, account groups and accounts. And then I can also do the drawdown from year to month. So this is, for example, something that the Caris matrix visual does that you can't do in Power BI. So you have a drawdown in the columns as well. Which you have a drawdown in, in Power BI as well, but not you can't do a selective collapse. So here I can do this if I have multiple years. In this case, I only have one. But I can do a multiple collapse. And let's say I have three years here. I could say I just want to see 2020 unfolded also in a nicer way where I can immediately say, okay, what's the, the parent here? And then I have the month underneath. And from here, I can now immediately start my planning. So I could now uh, go into edit mode and say, you know, what happens if we go to 8,000 here? I can immediately, and you saw this is instantly, and this is the power of the Keras engine. You can immediately see the results. This works on the base level, but it equally works on the consolidated level. So I have now a lot of options how I can do my data entry. So for example, I can do a relative data entry if I use I. So if I put in here now I, 10%. I have now increased um, the total value of all cost of sales by 10%. And this obviously has to adjust now all the underlying accounts underneath. So I can immediately see now if I do the drawdown, what has happened underneath to get this to this new target of plus 10%. So what we call splashing. So you really have the option to do this on any level. You could do things like, for example, at from a particular period, I want to now increase this to uh, minus 100,000, you put in R and it automatically writes this forward until the end of the period. So it makes data entry very easy and you have the other options as well. So you can enter your data here um, as you like and you also have the option to um, to comment on this. So and you see here, so you can put this in directly from here. And this comment is then automatically saved um, to the to the database exactly for the particular point here. You can also do this in visual. Uh, so you have both options. You can either be the separate visual or it can be the same. So if you want to do this in visual, you just right click here and you can put your comment here directly um, on the matrix visual as well. So this is a typical example of matrix based planning. The next one I want to show you something a little bit more sophisticated, which is driver based. So here you can see now uh, the different drivers that are set up here, but it's very easy to do. Um, so you're not in a uh, defined uh, core set. Uh, you can use any Power BI visual uh, in combination with any of the right back visuals. So here we have um, three of the carries ones. So we have one to plan volumes. We have one to plan prices. That's the matrix one that you've seen before. We've got the comments. Then we've got um, visual planning again for the foreign exchange rate and for tariff changes. These are drivers that were set up here and this is completely up to you. You can set them up as you want to. And from here, I can then immediately do my planning. So I can say, okay, if this goes down, if this goes down, if this goes up, what are the implications? I can see immediately the new total and I can see the variance to a, a comparison value. So in this case here, we are comparing this with the actuals from the prior year. And this is obviously, again, completely up to you. And you're using the single Power BI model. There's some applications out there that build a model in a model for planning in Power BI. And this is typically not what you want. So you want to have your model, single model in Power BI, and you don't want to move to another model container that is limiting you. Um, and uh, you also will have issues with accessing the, the model results, whereas here everything is in the same data model. So I can do my planning here, immediately see the implications. If I want to, I can save these results and you will again see the power of the Keras engine. So this again just took a second to update and you have to keep in mind this likely updated a lot of uh, different um, details and transactions because this was again done on a on a um, global level for all salespeople. We've got 20 salespeople here and I've adjusted my sales number here um, you know, just with a few clicks, it looked easy, but this had implications of changing thousands of records underneath. 
and I can immediately see what are the implications on my total sales on my gross margin and so on and this works for any uh, indicator so if I want to simulate now a change in foreign exchange rates let me just take a bit of a dramatic one and see now what the implications are of this we had um, 15.7 and minus 8.6 and I can see with this um, exchange rate it will go up to 16.7 and 9.7 9.1 million so you see these changes immediately so these are just um, examples of um, of planning so in varying uh, sophistications we have now a lot of other ones for capital expenditure HR planning financing cash flow um, where then all this comes together so you have what's called the integrated planning so you do your um, financial planning your sales planning um, your overheads and then it all ends up in a in a cash flow so and here we see now the cash flow which is the result of all the the planning of all the detailed plans so the um, the financial plans um, project planning which we'll cover a little bit later sales planning um, the driver based hr so here everything comes together and the way this is realized is using um, templates that are included in the carries for integrated planning that manage this um, connection between the different aspects one thing that's also important typically is the the model management and the transparency so from a model management point of view um, anything that you saw here can be directly maintained in Power as well. And this is done using the uh, Caris Table Edit Visual. So Table Edit allows you to connect to any table that you've linked uh, in a Caris. So this could vary from products, scenarios, um, accounts, and so on. And so the users that, and of course, also limited by the user rights. And here I can immediately create a new scenario if I need a new planning scenario. So this is Power. Power BI Summit and with that I have now changed the database so this is now a new planning scenario in the database on which I can immediately do my planning and what makes this um, easier is the new Actaris copy visual so you have now your new scenario but now I want to copy existing data to um, the new scenario so you just select the model so in this case it's finance you select the dimension scenario I want to work with the scenario name and then I want to copy the actuals into the new Power BI summit scenario and like this I cannot add as many parameters as I want to I could say I only want to do this for a particular um, fiscal semester so this is just from one to one and once you finish you just press copy and all the data will be copied uh, based on this requirement and as you can see this again uh, really only takes seconds so that this entire copying of actuals to the new um, scenario took uh, only seconds with this uh, right back and planning power you it's important to have control and that's why we are recommending to track every transaction in the system so our carries does this automatically so if we look, for example, here at the audit trail, I can see all transactions that people have made. So this could um, vary from uploading data, splashing, which means an a entry on a detailed level, and a variety of other things. And then you have the Power BI power to filter this by users, by models, by dates. And you know exactly who has done what. So this concludes the overview of planning options. And last but not least, we look at the brand new Acaris reporting. So um, I'm now switching to a new report here. And this contains the Acaris, the new Acaris Power BI visual. And um, the way this works is you just add um, in the rows and columns what you want to use. So here I've got a drill down between um, account groups and accounts. And then you just add your your scenarios so um, in my case the actual the budget and the absolute variance and you see you've got a third item here that I, I don't have here and that's one of the features of a carries reporting where you can do column calculations 
you already see things um, that um, you likely haven't seen um, in, in other standard uh, visuals, like for example, the uh, underscore for a measure, so immediately by the color, so a dark color is actual, a lighter color is budget or forecast. I can immediately tell what scenario I'm looking at. So this is something that you can set up in the reporting visual. And then you, you also see other things that um, you have formatting here in thousands. Um, you have formats here in uh, percentage. Um, you have some rows formatted um, you know, in absolute and some rows in, ver in, in relative with a percentage format. And this is what the Acaris reporting visual does. So it gives you the same flexibility as you know from Excel, where you can format um, your rows exactly as you want them, um, you know, with underlines and the number formatting. But equally, you can define your own calculations. So if I go here now into edit mode, I see now the calculations that um, have been set up for this report. And it's now as simple as in Excel. So if I, for example, want to have a new calculation, I can say here, I want to have a new calculation to calculate the gross profit. And the gross profit is, the gross profit percentage is the gross profit divided by the revenues. And now the only thing I need to change is the formatting. And now I have the, the correct calculation here. And for this, you have now the option to uh, apply style. So you can see a variety of styles that we have here. So if you want to have this now in a different um, underlined style, for example, for whatever reason you want to have green and double, then you can do this here and all the calculations that you've made are automatically um, shown here or up, the format is applied um, for the calculations where you have to find the particular style. So a super easy way to define financial reports exactly as you need them with a lot of features uh, in addition to what I've just shown you. For example, you can uh, show comments here uh, as an additional column. You will soon be able to also write back. You will soon have graphical representation according to IBCS where you have a waterfall chart for the uh, different items here where you can immediately at a glance see you know, how does your revenues and the expenses, how they um, evolve from revenue to um, the EBIT, for example. You set up your, your column calculation as you want to and all just with a few clicks. So this concludes my presentation. I hope you find it interesting. If you have any further questions, please um, uh, go to our website where you can start a free trial of um, all our components. Uh, we also have a uh, Q&A session on the 20th of April, there's a few sessions all day where my team and I um, are around to answer whatever questions you have. Thank you very much for attending and um, I wish you a great uh, rest of the Power BI Summit.